A new era begins as Octagon MMA, Europe's best MMA show, is coming to the UK for the very first time. Octagon 48 will go down on November 4th at the world-renowned AO Arena in Manchester. Where UK fans will experience the electric atmosphere and heart-pounding action that Octagon MMA is known for across Europe and beyond. We will bring some of MMA's biggest names, plus a feature bout that puts two UK stars that nobody would expect to see inside the cage going head-to-head -head after 10 months of vigorous training. One of the UK's best comedians will take on reality TV superstar Jake Quickenden. This is the fight that many people have had their eyes on. You will see UK MMA's rising star, Liverpool's Shem Rock. And one of the most well-known, most dangerous. This phenom has already racked up eight victories before the time limit, with seven of them in the very first round. And the cherry on top will be the grand finale of the MMA reality TV show, Octagon Challenge, England versus Ireland. After two months of the TV show, at this night in Manchester, the Octagon Challenge champion will be crowned. That's it! Great Britain, Octagon MMA is coming. November 4th at the AO Arena in Manchester. Robo Diamantový Čávo Pukač a proti němu Inkvizitor Miroslav Brož. Pikátní československé derby, které dodá Šťávu turnaj v Pražské O2 aréně. Brož se po dvou rokoch vrátil do Octagonu a je v výborné formě. Na jedno jsme u něj zvyklí. Jeho zápasy zvedají fanoušky ze Saradel. A to, ať už jde o šílené přestřelky, knockouty nebo 15 minut plných adrenalinu. Oh, dobrá pravá Brože! Miroslav Brož vždy doručí tu nejlepší podívanou. Český bojovník s bilancílou 14 vítězstv a 3 porážky si teraz zmeria sily s bratislavským diamantovým čálo. Robo Pukač obětoval zápas před domácím publikem, aby se mohl ukázat v O2 aréně a vyzvat právě Brože. Je to skutočný veterán. Svojím umením baví fanušikou už viac ako 13 rokov. Robo diamantový čálo Pukač! Připíše si Pukač druhou výhru v řadě? Nebo se při svém návratu do Octagonu bude radovat Inquisitor?
it coming down. I, I wonder how many times he practiced that. Yeah. <laughs> but again, his fight over Christian Youngwood, that was the change we saw in, in his demeanor, in his fight style. Back and forth they went to a split decision. He took that. And this is what makes it exciting. You look at this division, the welterweights. The spotlight this year is on them with the Tip Sport Game Changer. So many huge outside uh, influences coming in. Big talents from around the world into this division. And that is why Brosh has come back. He wants to test himself against the best on the biggest promotion in Europe. And here he is once again to try and do that against another legend of the game, another legend of Octagon, Robert Pukac. Robert Diamonte Chavo Pukac making his walk once again to this cage, the Octagon cage, a fan favorite here. Excited to be on the main card, really excited to be opening the card. There's a little bit of bad blood between these two. I don't know exactly where it has come from, what has been said, but you felt it at the weigh-ins, right? Look, when they were staring down at each other, this is more than just a competitive bout. Yeah, there's something going on between these two. You sensed it there, and they're seeing the focus in his eyes right now as well as he comes towards the Octagon cage. Pukac, a very slick striker as well, very clean, very calm, very different to Borch. They're like contrasting styles. It's going to be very interesting to see how they mix it up in there. But yeah, there's something going on. These two dislike each other. And we've got that. Czech, Slavak. Yeah, it's the age old battle over here, on. right? Age old battle to start us off on this card, on this main card here at Octagon 43. Well, listen, you talk about the changes that Roche made outside the cage. Again, Diamante Chava, the, the main man, Robert Pukac. He made changes to his gym, to his coaches. Stuck with his main man, Frantisek Foda. You'll see him in his corner there. But he then claimed his first win, broke a three fight losing streak. That was against. Uh, Thomas Bolo back at Octagon 35, and you saw the emotions in that fight, and that was off the back of the fight where he capitulated against Christian Jungwood, one that we witnessed at Octagon Prime, and it was, again, knowing who he was in the fighter, to see him break like that under the pressure was very strange. So to see him make the changes, to see him, you know, reinvent himself at this stage in his career and claim that victory at Octagon 35, that gets me even more excited to see how he welcomes back the one, the only Miroslav Brosh here at Octagon 43. This the tail of the tape, four years the younger Robert Pukac taking on the Inquisitor. The Inquisitor, he has the odds in his favor, but height and reach on the side of Robert Pukac. Both these guys, legends already inside the cage of Octagon, both legends in their own right in their respective countries of Slovakia and the Czech Republic, and tonight, Tonight here, opening the main card at Octagon 43. They will be looking to set this arena alight. So, let's get it underway. Let's hand it to Andre Novotny. Ještě jednou dobrý večer, dámy a pánové. V tuto chvíli začíná hlavní karta turnaje Octagon 43 a to Česko-Slovenskou bitvou, nebo chcete-li Slovensko-Českou. Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for the main card of this event, Octagon 43. Next bout is scheduled in 79.5 kilo, and the referee in charge is Pablo Picante Tosh. Let me introduce you both fighters, and we will start in a blue corner. He's 34 years old, stands 178 centimeter tall, weighing 79.4 kilo. Represent Renegade Prague Gym, and the coaches in his corner are David Vivagil, Lupo Shuda, and Zdenek Schwamberg. He has a professional record of 19 fights, 15 wins, one draw and three losses. Representing Neruda Cup team, Goldfingers, after two years back in Octagon, fighting out of Czech Republic, Miroslav Inquisitor Brosh. In the red corner, 
He is 30 years, stands 180 centimeter tall, weighting at 79.4 kilo. Represent Cvičisko Jiu Jitsu Academy Bratislava and the coaches in his corner are Fero Fodor, Boris Topčić and Roman Zelenka. He has a professional record of 27 fights, 16 wins, 7 finishes, 1 draw and 10 losses. Fighting out of Slovakia! Robert Diamantovic Havo Pukac! Parve, tři kola po pět minutách. Pravdle a znáte, tak si hlídejte. Pojďte čistě aktivně. Pozdravte se do svých rohů. Final instructions for this, the opening bout of our main card here, Octagon 43. Roche, the tip spot favorite, white shorts, blue corner, Roba Pukac in the red corner, black shorts. And you saw Broche as he was being announced, pointing at this cage. He is back. He wants to own this cage, make it his own. But Diamante Chavo, Roba Pukac will have other things to say. Game started straight away here. It's these two swing nice inside kick from Pukac. And one of the interesting figures on the stats as they walked out is Pukac's takedown defense, 71% inside the octagon cage. Brosh, we've seen it use it so much, those takedowns, all big heavy right hands. He is a different beast since that Jan Malak fight. Nice slick, straight shots coming out of the Pukac corner. Oh, but Brosh swinging forward with that overhand right hand. A few nice inside knees. Yeah, Would have clinch. worked quite a lot of time here, I think. I believe in camp, knowing that this position was going to unfold. And doing well to get those knees up the middle. And again, to be careful the force doesn't time to oh. get that takedown. Good That's left knee there. Really good amount of space from uh, Pukac as well. Look at that Beautiful turnout and the knee. Wow! Pukac. Look at that. And to me, I just feel like he has a different energy that I've seen before here. That's Pukac, a great he, demeanor. He seems happy, fun, enjoying himself. Yeah, and switched on in the moment. We've seen him, you know, in that Young Earth fight in particular. He just wasn't there, Luke. Yeah, in the moment is a great way of putting it. He just seems different to me. I can't put my finger on it yet, but Borsch here, nice knee up the middle. Oh, and, and again. again. But Borsch taking oh. them and throwing heavy shots here right in front of us as he looks for this double leg. Nice knee again. The space he is making inside close quarters. With the power in the, the little shots coming off of Rosh as well when they separate. He's throwing heavy lever, goes in on this single. Nice, gets gets that knee out. Beautiful knee again on the inside. Definitely worked a lot here. Has pull catch in his position. Yeah, and look at the frame and the exit, and even that knee on the exit there, Luke. Certainly looking at ways that they can cause damage as they try and find. Eyes wide open for pull catch. Just don't like the way he's circling so heavily to the left, though. Circling heavy. Right to that power oh, hand of Brosh. Bull like attack there from Brosh. Oh, but he eats a couple of shots. And returns nice knee again on the inside and again to the face. Those knees from Pukac are sneaky coming up the middle and it's very good when he frames and circles out as well. So the last loss for Robert Pukac was that fight against Christian Youngworth. And one of the issues that he had was the pressure and the pace that Youngworth brought. It feels very like uh, Mirosav Brosh is applying the same sort of game plan, right, Luke? See, yeah, but the Brosh, Miroslav's pressure is different, it's slightly different, because yeah. he's not in his face throwing shots constantly. Yeah, I know he's doing it right yes. now, <laughs> landing well. He's a lot more forward pressure up against the fence. So it gives Pukac a moment to breathe. With, with Youngworth, he just didn't allow him to settle. He didn't allow him to find his pace. He didn't allow him, you know, any space whatsoever, in his face the whole time. More like this now from Brosh. Yeah, Brosh. Big oh, swing, but nice knee nice again. Nice knee again. The knees are working well, but now another takedown attempt and here this from Brosh. Oh, look at that. It out. Look at the reversal. Great work. He gets work. the knee on the way up as well. Oh, oh, his knee's gone. His knee's gone. His back right knee. That looks like Brosh yeah. got hurt, definitely. Struggling here. That knee, I think it was as they switched and scrambled to get up. Oh, and again. For me, with Pukac, he needs to stop throwing that jab to try and stop Brosh, because that Brosh is going to run right through it and throw a heavy, heavy shot. He Look needs to throw a backhand to start off. The movement of Brosh has certainly changed. I can only think, and maybe we'll get it on the replay, as they look to scramble and stand up. 
An issue with that knee occurred. Seems to be hiding it well anyway, oh. as it comes flying forwards. Hard to judge this because, you know, Miroslav controlling, pushing forward, landing some big, heavy, like, good-looking shots. But then once he gets inside, he has no success getting the takedown. He gets spun off the cage and he gets caught with a few knees. So tactically, a very interesting fight. Good feint there from Miroslav. 40 seconds left in what has been a high-paced first outing in round number one here for both these guys. Oh, swing and a miss from Miroslav. I'm loving the way he goes back to the jab here at Pukac as well. His fundamental striking is very, very good. Good footwork, good long shots. Oh, nice, nice head, head kick. kick. And, and again. Through it again. Both blocked, though. And Miroslav continues with the onslaught. Punch on the break well is Miroslav. Really oh, nice right hand. That's what I'd like to see from Bukac. Leading with our right hand on the back. Oh, and again, he's hit him. There you go, as you called it, right at the end of the round. Great work from our referee, Pavel Tosh. Yeah, got right in the, in the danger zone in there. there. No fear whatsoever from that man. But I feel like Miroslav is bringing that weight forward. He's coming forward and he's swinging. But... When Pukac tries to negate that with the jab, it doesn't have enough bite on it to stop him. He just runs right through the jab and hits him with a big overhand. If he starts leading with the backhand, right hand, left hook, for example, or right uppercut, then Miroslav will walk onto that power shot of Pukac, which he did right at the end of that first round. Uh, you said it as well in there. So difficult to call either way, depending on what you are looking at as a, as a judge, what you are looking for. Luckily, we have another two potential rounds scheduled between these two. It is so close, so tight, and we said it before. This is there was certainly some animosity, and right now they are bringing everything to try and get this over the line, right? Yeah, definitely. And I feel like Lukash had its moments, especially with those knees up the middle. But the power that was coming out of Miroslav when he was throwing. See here, you see hooks for hooks. But then when you watch Miroslav throw the hooks back, they just seem to have so much more bite and power on them. So I think I will see the stats, but I think technically Lukash probably landed more. Just as this is going on again, we'll look at the replay here from some of the action. But Miroslav Brosh kept pointing to his right knee, to his corner, and he was shaking it out a little bit there. Oof, still coming forward, though. Like you said, disguising it very well, but I do... Nice up the middle. Yeah, there's something going on with that right knee. We're not quite sure what it is, but still managing to admit pressure with it, come forward and keep his style pretty much the same as the first round. Nice shoulder shrug. Shoulder bump there from Miroslav Brotz. The crowd are loving this. What an opening fight this is. The main card here, Octagon 43. 20,000 people here in Prague to witness this. And then the build-up to the grudge match of all grudge matches. Patrick Kinsel defending his belt against the one and only Carlos Vimola. Circles of defense well there, Pukac. Needs to take control now and needs to get the respect. Of Miroslav. Miroslav happy to eat a shot, to give a shot so far. I'm loving the movement of Pukac. Like you said, just a different energy, a different demeanor. Real good uh, cage craft as well. Yeah, definitely the slicker of the two, but doesn't have the power that Miroslav holds. It depends what the judges are seeing. Like this big right hand lands. He gets out, but did the judges count that as him landing a good shot? It's hard to know. I like the way he's using that knee as well. As he comes in, he keeps going back to that. But as you said, the adjustment he made at the end of round one was attacking with the right hand, and he got some success. Oh, really nice right hand there, lands as well from both men. Miroslav seems unfazed from any shot that lands from Pulko. It's so good to have Bruce Oy, back, beautiful. back in and on this roster. We heard the welcome he got, and you can see why. Since that Jan Malak fight, he has been in fight of the nights again and again and again, in and out of the promotion. They're just constantly bringing that pressure. Again, the crowd here. Happy, excited for what has been on offer. Oh, it's been an incredible night so far, fights. Some real moments. We're just at the beginning of the main card. 
We have our three big fights at the top end of this card as well. Oof. Obviously the main event and then our two game change about. Yeah, the first of those quarter finals. Oh, nice uppercut there from Pukac. Again, switching up and using that, that rear hand, that right hand to land shots, but it does, there's not enough bite on them for me. He needs to really dig in. I earn no respect. No slabs eating everything, it just keeps coming. Yeah, and also just the output. Pukac was kind of matching him for output in the first round. He's kind of sitting back a little bit trying to catch him with those single shots. Oh, there you go, there you go, there you go. There you go, Mirista Brush smiles and moves forward again. Oh, this pressure, this pressure is insane. Circles off well, this blue catch of defense. Both men trying to establish dominance, but every time Miroslav seems to find his way pushing forward. Not the cleaner striking of the two, but definitely the more aggressive. He's starting to see a bit of pop coming off those shots from Pukac. So this pressure is what's starting to wear on him, Luke. Then he's drifted to the left a lot. Oh trying, to, trying to time that right hand. Blood coming from the nose of Miroslav, but nothing. Oh! Too dreadful that's going to really hurt him as we move into almost the final minute of this second round. Firing forward again, full light motion, blitz attack once more from Brosh. And just takes everything that uh, Pukac throws and just eats it and keeps coming forward. Doesn't seem phased one bit by any shot so far. There's been one, one punch at the end of the first round that seemed to rock him, but apart from that, happy to take the damage. Beautiful knees yeah, on the knees inside. up the middle. They have been good from round one into round two, but there's just not enough coming from Pukac now in this second stanza. Oh, nice. I'd like to see him use the kicks as well to try and change the distance. Pukac could throw that right hand, left head kick. Nice in and out, evading. <laughs> Good extension on those shots. <laughs> Bloody in the nose of Brosh, but Brosh still moving forward. Ten seconds left in round number two. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Pukachu not throwing as many knees in that second round either when he had the opportunity. They said, feel like his output dropped a little bit. And nice to see the stats. Yeah, sorry, that was the first time as well. Just watching Pukac go back to his corner. Round one, you talked about him being free and sort of having a nice energy. First time he kind of shook his head and had that look in his eyes. But this is who you're facing, right? This is, you know, what he does. Brosh will bring that pressure. And there's five more minutes. What do you think, Frantisek Foda, what do you think the team there in Pukac's corner need to say to change tactically to get more out of Pukac moving into the final five minutes? He needs minutes? to stand his ground. He needs to stand his ground and, and gain the respect of Miroslav. He can't keep backing up and ending up on the fence. We'll see with the highlights here. Miroslav managing to put him on, even here, look, manages to have him on the fence, throwing great shots here over and over again, but none of them really earning the respect of Miroslav. He backs up and straight afterwards he comes forward, throwing here. And listen, how frustrating is it as a fighter when you're connecting with what you consider good shots, but they are doing nothing. They are doing it, nothing. That seems to be happening a lot here. Miroslav, tough as nails coming forward. I would say to Pukas to go back to the knees, those knees at the middle, teeps at the middle. You need to throw direct shots through the middle because that's what's going to stop him just coming forward with those entourages. You just saw the tip spot odds pop on the bottom of the screen there. A huge favourite now, 3-1. to one. Miroslav Brosh bringing that pressure in round number two and applying it early, round three. Oh, look at the take. What a takedown there from Pukac. Yeah, that's another tactical change you can make, especially with that forward pressure that negates it. I just would not expect that to come out of Pukac's corner, but great idea from them. Obviously an idea in between rounds from the cornerman, and it paid off massively. Not sure how the judges had this score, though, especially in that third, first round. Second round to me definitely went to Miroslav, but the first round was close, so you don't know. Yeah. It's not really a, an idea to try and take this to a judges' scorecard. I think both these gentlemen should be looking for a finish. And I think this is exactly what Pukac is going to do. You jump back to his record. A similar foe they've had is the one and only Jan Malak. Malak got the decision win over Miroslav Brosh, but Pukac caught him with a beautiful Kimura one he worked with the same takedown from this position all the way across to isolate that left arm 
uh, an outstanding finish against Jan Malika. We know just how tough Jan is, so for me, we talked about what changes need to happen. It's great to see him not just get that advice, but implement it and make that difference right in the round, start the round. Yeah, it shows a lot of confidence as well in his takedown ability because he went straight for it. But, oh, yeah, I forgot I can take him down. Oh, yeah, there we see a takedown. What a Brilliant nice work. takedown, though, right? Brilliant. The body lock with the little leg reap as well. And now he's trying to pry his leg out to try and pass from the half guard position. But pretty dominant here so far for Pukac on top. Three minutes and 25 seconds now to work in this final round of this catch weight bout. And we learned today the reason it was a catch weight was earlier on in the camp, Miroslav Brosh was ill, didn't want to pull out of the fight, but did say, Look, can we set a catch weight? Pukac had no issue with that. He said, Yeah, I want to fight you no matter what. So pick a weight, I'll take it. And still trying to free that leg up, right? Look, what does Pukac need to do to pass that guard? I mean, he has different options. He can try and get a higher pressure, like shoulder pressure here, which he's doing now, to then try and get the leg out so he can flatten out the man and extend the spine or create a little bit more space. Or he needs to free the leg because this, this right leg of, of Miroslav is pinning him down. So he needs to try and get the ankle out. He could also sit back on the leg and throw big shots to change it up. It's very, very open now to pass. He tries to get that knee through. He needs to pass this right knee as well. So Miroslav utilizing the knee shield too. You could just switch the hips, make a quick, fast movement, but you might leave a bit of space. And I feel like Pukac happy to sit in his half-guard position. He's winning the round, whatever whatever we say right now. A lot of top pressure, a lot of shots. He's active on top, he's not just holding him. So he might feel like confident that he got the first round. It's a, it's a big gamble though, right? It's a it's huge gamble. It's a big gamble. He should be looking for the finish for sure. And listen, I know the corner as well, Frantisek Fodor, is his brother in arms, and uh, I'm sure he will have been absolutely honest with him what is on the line, what he needs to do. He's and doing, he... doing great here and really dismantling uh, Miroslav at this point. If he'd have realized this hole in the game earlier on, he could have done it in the round one and two, but has this wrist right now, throwing these big shots, and has really found a bit of a, a hole in the armor here. Yeah, this makes it super interesting. Pukat still. Adding up the damage there, working from this position. One minute, 25 seconds left to try and get through that guard. Maybe earn a submission. Needs to be careful, Mirosev doesn't use that fence to try and eject out. He does. But he's going to open up a little bit now. Maybe going to allow the pass. Blood if he's going to backstep that back leg. Yeah, blood from the mouth on the nose of Mirosev Brosh. Good, Good pressure. Really, though? From catch to stay on top here as well. Miroslav not even really attempting to get up so far. Seems like a big hole in the game for me. He can pass straight away now if he wanted to. Bukac is left wide open. But I think he's comfortable there. I don't think he's even trying to pass. I think he tried to pass at one moment, maybe to try and negate the lockdown. But now he's happy to be on top in this, this uh, half guard position. The interesting thing about the lockdown, if it was on that compromised knee, that makes it awkward and painful, right? If you're trying to leg lock or lock down somebody on that far side. Definitely. Great work here from Pukat, scrambling here. Only 30 seconds left, so only 30 seconds to get a finish if he can try to. Now he's past the guard, now he's past the side control position. Let's see if he looks for now that Kimura spot. South. Yeah. Maybe look to oh, work his way to the back the other side, gets, gets that one, one hook in. Oh my Maybe goodness! Wow, only final 10 seconds. seconds. And Miroslav going to manage to get himself back up to his feet. No, good adjustments made from Pukac. What a fight. And the great um, changes made in that third round from Pukac tactically to definitely win that third round, unsure. Uh, listen, it all rides on the first round, Luke, and it is a coin Very, toss very, there. yeah, exactly. A very close round, depending how you scored it, how you looked at it. But Miroslav Roch coming forward with big, heavy hooks, definitely holding the power and throwing the more significant strikes. I feel like the Pukac team feel like they've won it. Listen, because they finished the round as the fight as it as they did, but they're going to have to jump back to round number one, and it was so close. I can see it going either way, and again, it depends what caught the judge's eye. You called it in that first round. You said, are they going to, you know, the pressure, the, the big shots of yeah, Miroslav Brosh? Yeah, significant strikes yeah. for Brosh. He was throwing heavy, and they're there to they catch the judge's eyes, you know, the power. There was no power, really, out of the Pukac corner in the first round. He was very technical, had some beautiful knees up the middle, done great work negating the takedowns, 
He will see highlights. Uh, of let, the let's third see round. that takedown. Let's see that takedown because early on, look at this, and it's the leg around. It's like a spear, Woo! and it just takes down on the outside reap. Does well to get that, and that changed this whole fight and the whole momentum of how it was going, and then just consistent ground and pound, just beating down Miroslav. I mean, round two, we saw the pressure and the pace of Brosh seem to take the momentum. Round three, that takedown led to a beating and a lot of the damage. Really an unbelievable fight. What a treat, what a way to open the card here. Octagon 43, there's the numbers. 110 all punches versus 165. 61 versus 51 as far as significant punches. And that one takedown, the takedown that came in that third and final round that led to most of the damage that Miroslav Brosh is wearing. I am sure one of these fighters is going to be hugely disappointed. I agree. I feel, I feel I can sense a split decision victory yeah. coming on. And, and I don't know which which direction it's going to be, but one man knows. Yeah, let's hand it to him now. Let's give it to the man with the golden jacket and the mic, Mr. Andre Novotny. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, this bout goes to the judges' scorecard. So let's see how the judges score this fight. 29-28, Pukac. 29-28, Brosh. And 29-28 for the winner by split decision. Miroslav Inquisitor Brosh. There we have it, Miroslav taking that split decision victory. We did say it was going to be close and come down to the first round. We'll hear from him now with Mr. Andre Novotny. Close fight, great fight from both men. Tak, uh, Miro, samozřejmě jako vítěz máš přednost. <laughs> Gratuluju. Uh, je to, byl to velmi čestný zápas, jak když jsem odcházel, tak jsem říkal, jeden z vás bude hodně zklamaný. Jak to vnímáš ty? No, já si myslím, lidi, pojďte se podívat, dvě kola jsem tlačil a Robo je jasný třetí kolo. Za mě remíza. Za mě remíza, já jsem nevyhrál. Je to remíza. Za mě. Ale... Děkuju, já třeba s Honzou Malachem jsem si taky myslel, že jsem vyhra z Junior, tam to bylo strašně vyrovnaný. Ale třetí kolo bylo jasný, jsem o čem bavil, já jsem prostě, já jsem se chtěl rvát a jak jsem měl ty antibiotika, tak se nebo schopný se zvednout, ale Robo, super třetí kolo, ale dvě... Není potřeba ty, aby se za něco omlouval, si vítěz tohoto zápasu v očích rozhodčích a v očích mnoha fanoušků. V každém případě, jaké to bylo po dvou letech zpátky v Outu Areně v Octagonu? Mluvám, mám to sere, protože já jsem říkal, že mi jedno, kterou pane, já si dobrý zápas a myslím si, že dvě kola byla skvělý, ne? Bavili jste se dvě kola. A to, tohle je odměna. Robo, hezký fakt. To budu, ale sorry, nejsem rozhodčí. Děkuju moc, strašně, strašně děkuju, jak jste mě přijali. Děkuji. Člověk dělá chyby a já jsem udělal chybu. Dovolil jste mi se vrátit a děkuji všem, děkuji Robovi, že to vzal. Díky Gam. Tobě on Ondro hrozně se Pavlem, děkuji. Děkujeme moc, Miroslav. Lidi věřte Boha, děkuji. Ča. Miroslav Inquisitor Broš, vítěz tohoto zápasu, Robo. Zklamání, ptal si se mě, jak jsem to viděl já. My jsme to komentovali a říkali jsme, že velmi těžké je říct, kdo vyhrál ty první dvě kola. Jaké jsou tvoje argumenty? Moje argumenty jsou, že prvé kolo bylo vyrovnané, ale na konci prvého hula, kola jsem ho nahulil sám, to vě, vě to celý jeho tým. To byl devíč na mojej straně, lebo byl takmer k ukončení zápasu, keby kolo krvalo 10-15 sekund viac, tak mám zápas. Druhé kolo vyhrál, to ma zatlačilo, o třetím se nebáme. Je výhra na mojej straně, ale když si chceš robiť jméno u fanoušiků, tak dajme si v Bratislave na jeseň odvetu. Uvidíme, jestli to tak dopadne. Borci si to v tuhle chvíli domluvili, necháme to ještě taky trošku na mě, ale, ale, ale možná jakože proč ne? Vy byste chtěli odvetu? OK, tak necháme to na mě pro tuhle chvíli, vítěz Míra Broš. Děkujeme moc, Robo Pukač, Míra Broš, moc zápas. Děkuju moc trenéru, přijít trenéři, rodina, děkuju moc.
what a fight. That was really, really close. So Brush, the winner, thinks that he pushed hard and uh, in his eyes it had actually been a draw. He said that third round had actually been clear and he really wanted to make a good fight. He is quite uh, sorry that he wasn't uh, able to do so in the, th in the third round. However, he said also that he was sorry because that he was uh, not the referee. He said sorry to his opponent and he also encouraged everyone to believe in God. As for Pukac, Pukac uh, says that he won the first uh, round because he made his opponent punch drunk and uh, then he uh, wanted to, he would like, he said that he wanted to have a rematch in Bratislava and the crowd cheered to that. A new era begins as Octagon MMA, Europe's best MMA show, is coming to the UK for the very first time. Octagon 48 will go down on November 4th at the world-renowned AO Arena in Manchester. Where UK fans will experience the electric atmosphere and heart-pounding action that Octagon MMA is known for across Europe and beyond. We will bring some of MMA's biggest names, plus a feature bout that puts two UK stars that nobody would expect to see inside the cage going head-to-head -head after 10 months of vigorous training. One of the UK's best comedians will take on reality TV superstar Jake Quickenden. This is the fight that many people have had their eyes on. You will see UK MMA's rising star, Liverpool's Shemrock. And one of the most well-known, most dangerous... This phenom has already racked up eight victories before the time limit, with seven of them in the very first round. And the cherry on top will be the grand finale of the MMA reality TV show, Octagon Challenge, England versus Ireland. After two months of the TV show, at this night in Manchester, the Octagon Challenge champion will be crowned. That's it! That's it! Great Britain, Octagon MMA is coming. November 4th at the AO Arena in Manchester.